Very long, that's for sure. We're ready to go here in Valencia for the Grand Prix of Europe from Polis Bagaro on pole position and Juan Mir got away well also. So did Nakagami and it's a head by head to head here for turn one. Re advantage, almost contact there between Nakagami and Mir through the first corner. Miguel Oliveira's had an exceptional start from eighth, already up to fifth. Up a couple of places he's going through there on Alicia Spagaro who's just behind his teammate Franco Morbidelli. Brilliant start, as we just mentioned by Oliveira. Mir up the inside of Nakagami at turn six. The fast starting Mir then onto the podium places already. Brilliant. Suzuki second and third. Raro. Oh, oh, someone's gone down. Somebody's Who gone down is there. that? Who is that? It's, it's Quateraro. 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 has gone down. Quateraro's world championship dreams in tatters on the first lap in Valencia. The disasters continue for the Frenchman. We need to see what happened there. El Diablo deflated and dejected. Is he down and out of this MotoGP world championship battle as well? Back at Quateraro. Oliveira now trying to find his way through on Takenakagami. He's made that move. Miguel Oliveira has been brilliant. Already gained four. And then, oh my goodness me, no, he was going up the inside of Franco Morbidelli. I don't think there was any contact. There was no contact. No Quattararo down in the gravel together, but in separate incidents in the same corner. Can you believe this? How much more... It shows you that Quattararo, as a result, as it stands, would be 30 points down with two races to go. And that is a big, big mountain to climb. But they were in both Aragon races. Rins is having a look. Here he is. He's up the inside of Polis oh, him up. Brilliant, brilliant work there from Alex Rins out of his sight. Yeah, that was super aggressive and ruthless by Rins into turn number 11. Picks up pole big time. Now then, Juan Mir trying to run Polis Bargaro. He does indeed. He holds on to second place to the Spargaro. <laughs> How's the heart right now? Davide Brivio, across the line we go. Era looking really good, 32.764 from him on the last lap. One of the quickest men on the circuit, actually faster than Polis Bargo and Juan Mira. Suzuki KTM, Suzuki KTM through turn four, which can be treacherous. Mir here is really hungry, really good into turn six. Does he fancy a move there? No, not quite. Whoever decided to put the heart rate monitor on Davide Brivio right now, Gish to turn seven and eight. He's a bit wide, but that is a corner you can take a different line on to get some more drive through quicker there. Just the corner speed of the Suzuki is brilliant. The edge grip clearly better than the KTM in that tight infield section. Bit place having a good battle with his protege. Mir's going Bagnaia. for it again. He's thought about that move once more. Bad. Across the line we go. It's oh, Rins. somebody else is down there. Who in the is that? That's well. an Aprilia. I think that's uh, Savadori, is it? Or oh, Renzo Savadori. Yeah. To end what Absolute has been an nightmare. awful day for Aprilia. Fair play to Maverick Vinales. Yes, he's got clear track in front of him. Only a couple of attempts slower than Alex Rins at this stage of the race. Vinales in 18th place. He's got Fabio Quattararo behind him, of course, but Quattararo. But one thing is for sure. Suzuki's so strong at the end of races, it bodes well that they are currently in first and third. He mate Rins. He's got a problem himself though, hasn't he, Mir? Because Oliveira is swarming all over his rear tire. Here comes Mir. He's beautiful. on the inside. That's Same beautiful. move as what Alex Rins. Binder takes his long lap penalty there at the top of your picture. Sam, you've got some thoughts? Yeah, Morbidelli. Big, big, only one that ran. Look. It could work. We'll keep an eye on the number 21. He's currently in seventh, but it's a Suzuki 1-2. Suzuki's are just where hold up better than everybody else's. They're so gentle. They've got the way to get the power to the ground without tearing up really. Let's have a look at this move then from Aleisha Spargro and Fabio Quattararo. No contact made. What Grove got his move wrong? That is so bizarre. Looked like the crash that we saw in Le Mans that yeah, time. Yeah, Davizioso and Marquez did a tandem tumbled in. When Fabio Quattararo surrendered the 2020 MotoGP World Championship, having had such an amazing start. Oh, Rossi has got problems for Yamaha this week in Valencia. Well, particularly the Monster Energy Yamaha team. I mean, you talk about weeks from hell. Rossi had a mechanical dinny that ruled him out of the season opener in Jerez. All their well-documented mechanical problems have dragged on into this weekend. Whoops for Yamaha are pinned on Franco Morbidelli's shoulders here with the hard front, hard rear. Mere fastest lap of the race at 32.05. Control of this MotoGP World Championship. They're looking very, very good in the early stages here, the two Suzuki boys. Suzuki have never given out in 2001. On board here with Juan Mir. Fabio Quattararo is quite fortunate, to be fair, to be in the race. Oh, oh Pecco Bagnaia. What a he wretched run he's been wait in. wait to see the end of 2020, can he? The bike obviously not picking up any kind of damage. 31.984 though. You've got to take your hat off to Fabio Quattro because that's a couple of... ...have not had too many battles head-to-head -head so far this year. Cal Crutchlow's now crashed out. The LCR Honda rider, hopefully he's Ogales. He's now moved into point to position as a result of that. 
Yeah, Vignal is just at a 130. Alex Rin still making the headway at the front of this Grand Prix of Europe. Under pressure from Juan Mir, the heart rate. He is not letting the Suzuki's out of his sight. And someone else as well. You've got to keep a really busy as well. And he's not far away in fifth. Here is Fabio Quattararo then trying to salvage some points. Spargo, he's in 16th place right now as Fabio Quattararo. 14 seconds he is behind Maverick Vinales, who's directly... We saw the strength of Suzuki's and KTM's in Austria, didn't we? What a weekend that was. Coming back into contention. And Franco Morbidelli's got two Ducatis of Jack Miller and Andrea De Vizioso for company. Jack Miller's just... He can't leave it really any longer to start closing down on this leading group because Jack Miller at the moment is losing touch with, has decided, I've got the heat in the tyres, it's time to push. He looked like he'd just gone up into seventh there ahead of Morbidelli. He has. Yeah, this is more trouble coming. Morbidelli now is going to be under intense pressure oh, look from the at likes that. of Dovi and Marquez. Look at the live championship standings right now. Well, not see a scenario. Yes, we've had so many twists and turns, more than Spaghetti Junction back at home, but you can't see Mia. So, uh, let the pressure get to him and lose a lead that big with just two to go. But who knows, this is 2020. It is Morbidelli. Behind Marquez is Andrea De Vizioso. Here we are on board with your race leader, Alex Rins. What a bizarre... Then, of course, Alex Rins busted his shoulder, missed the opening round, came back to 10th, but we thought, well, that's his championship over. Well, now look at where we are. Yeah, they're hammering it in Hamamatsu, aren't they, at the moment, that's for sure. Alex Rins, and in doing so, take his first ever MotoGP victory. Alex Rins normally is the epitome of cool and calm and to see what he would do because 27 point lead with two races to go is a very, very comfortable position to be in. But Miguel Oliveira just have not been able to latch back onto Mir's rear tyre. Paul Spargaro over half a second now. Suzuki's at the moment are just that slightly marginally quicker. There's Joanne Zarco as ever doing a sterling job on the sponsor armor race. And as well as they come out of turn 11, Jack Miller has been able to gap Franco Morbidelli. Uh, Morbidelli now has got more champions in Moto2, Morbidelli and Marquez. The virtual fan wall, there's some tense faces there <laughs> as uh, various fans watch positives out of it. At least he's OK, but it will be interesting to know exactly what's gone wrong there. Well, it looked like the M1 cried no more, didn't it? Factory. Lynn Jarvis must barely want to look at the screens at the moment. It's been a, a very humbling and humiliating in terms of the World Championship. The two Yamahas of Quattararo and Vinales. Ooh. Exceeding track limits there as Quattaro and of course the Vinales and at the moment out of the points. Here is Alex Rins on four. What would be would be 70 points from 75. That's Lorenzo Savadori just sitting up and allowing riders through. He crashed earlier and rejoined. He doesn't want to get in the way. And Paul in third is up to almost eight tenths of a second now. Fascinating scenario here because you've got Alex Rins looking at his pit board, seeing 36. He's going to want to put Juan Mir in his place. He will not want that first victory. This is a really intriguing battle raging between this pair. Rather interestingly, Oliveira and Polis Fog. Yeah, and of course, we keep saying how good the Suzuki's are. They are the favourites to perhaps manage the tyres better, but who knows in it wrong where they can't rely on that sweet handling GSXRR to get them out of a bit of a pickle. Here's your helicopter. And then it's Oliveira, Nakagami and Zarco with Miller still catching. Alex Marquez has now gone through on Morbidelli. Morbidelli's in ninth place now. And if he stays there, his championship over. Yeah, what a dismal... With back-to-back -back wins for Fabio Quattararo. No team has won more in 2020 MotoGP than the Malaysian back squad, but it's all going... He was faster than the two ahead of him. Juan Mir mapping two. Now... Is that, we've seen that a few times from Suzuki. Polis Bargaro is catching yeah, the two Suzuki's here. Polis Bargaro is riding out of his skin at the moment. Absolutely incredible. This Jarvis, he let us know that Valentino, they don't know exactly, but he said Valentino tried to accelerate out of a corner. That's believed most likely is fuel pump. Thank you very much for that, uh, Simon. Bad news again for Yamaha, but at least it doesn't sound like it's in a ninth place. It gets worse for yeah. Yamaha. It's a bit of a timid surrender, this, isn't it, by Patronus Yamaha SR crashing on the very first lap. On board with the World Championship leader, now looking back from his teammate Alex Rins, who the Grand Prix of Valencia here next week. Do you know what? You've got to give Alex Rins a lot of credit. He's riding under intense pressure here, trying to get a long time. They just keep exchanging 132 ones. Nothing between the two Suzuki men at all.
Stephen Miller now starting to lap similar times to the leaders. Morbidelli's pace has just dropped off a fellow Italian. So Franco Morbidelli may well be able to hang on to a place in the top 10, but not the afternoon that he was on. We could track the Suzuki's out front on board with Mir. This is where they're so, so strong. Their corner speed is well, where his risk and reward ratio is sitting right now. Of course, he's desperate to win that first Grand Prix, but he's trying to secure that precious first victory. Bearing in mind, there are 20 points up for grabs here. And as with this situation, well, there's a couple of... Well, it looks like there's some trouble here for Tito Rabat. Now, what's happened here? Championship rival is actually right in front of him. Yeah, Alex Rins, and it's his teammate. And what's rule number one? Always beat your teammate. So into the closing stages. 31-9 from Alex Rins, his personal yeah. best lap of the race and on Factory Suzuki. He's so, so silky smooth, so precise. Yes, the motorcycle allows him to do that. But yeah, on that Suzuki, he really does. Here's Quattararo, he's gone up to 15th now with Tito Rabat in the pit. So it's one point, hands of Nakagami. And Miller has just put in his fastest lap as well. And he's all over the back of Joan Zarco. Yeah, and the problem for Takanaka this battle as well, it means Takanakagami has two. On that lap, Mia just slightly faster than Rins, and they still can after the race. Brad Binder's recovered well from the penalty leap. He's in 11th, he's chasing down Morbidelli. But here is Paul Mir is really close to Rins on this lap, Matt. Really close. Is there a move coming here from Juan Mir? This is as close as he has been when we get to the start finish straight of Davide Previo <laughs> if they get any closer. And head up towards Tian Grand Prix. Yeah, a lot of laps still for these tyres to contend with. Who's going to keep the grip the best? Polispargo just running in a little. Well, he's riding the wheels off that KTM Polispargo. There's nothing more he can do. Nothing more he can do. He'll be able to go to bed tonight. The warning he had. As uh, they make way around and Nakagami's gone through. So Nakagami is up into fourth. Or is he about to be overtaken again by Oliveira? Yeah, well, that would be the last thing he needs for Oliveira to sweep straight back on through. Having done a two, it's as you were with these three riders. Ninth place at the moment for Andrea De Vizioso. Looks like it's looking very dubious that Dovi will still be a force to be reckoned with in the final two races. It's a potential one, not had a one two. I don't think they've had a one two since 1982. And back in those days, it was the likes of Randy Mamola doing so well. Randy Mamola and Virginio Ferrari, I believe. Hockenheim in 1982, the last time that happened. Wow. At the moment, can't watch as normal. Fourth place for <laughs> Nakagami. As it stands, he's not made any inroads on Polis Fargaro. Is this the move coming from Juan Mir? Coming across the line for Rins. Mir will be quicker and is not a lot in it. Just looked as well, the more traction and acceleration grip. And then Polis Fargaro, the KTM's horsepower this year, it's a weapon in a straight line and it's got brilliant 14. He can recover in the braking zone for turn one. Oh, I love this, Matt. I absolutely love this because it's such a chess match. He doesn't have to do anything about the position he's in. He could just cruise home behind Alex Rins and take a brilliant second and extend his championship all weekend. He has got his eyes on the prize. And despite the pressures of being the world championship leader, he's going all out for victory and leads. 11 laps to go at turn 11 and he's made that move. Now then, Juan Mir, he's been sitting behind Alex Rins for so long and staring down the barrel of Juan Mir, not only extending his world championship lead, but doing so from the top step of the podium for the first time in Moto GP to the Grand Prix for the first time in quite some time. Into turn one he goes. Can he now make a break away from Alex Rins? Stoners do. The sort of thing yeah, Mar Marquez does. Absolutely. He doesn't need to do it. The, get, the door was left yeah, wide right, open Rins there Rins. got in all the space. It was a mistake by Alex Rins, wasn't it? He was out on the curbs coming in between turns nine and ten. <laughs> Good. Well, yeah, unfortunately for him, there's another ten laps to go. Now then, what does Alex Rins better for Juan Mir? 37 points clear he would be of Alex Rins or leap from in, into second place in the championship. Miracles to try and get back into the championship battle. That is astonishing, isn't it? Really is astonishing. That's a hand and a half on the MotoGP world. So this is a key Grand Prix, a key nine or ten laps or so here in Valencia because they are Korea with Suzuki's last world champ back in 2000 and they've never been closer, they've never fought for it as strong as this in 2020. Big questions here of his teammate Alex Rins.
What a day this could be. Not only a 1-2 in the race, but there'd be one. He's had double the podiums of anyone in 2020 thus far. He's been a cut above the rest. And this will be justice. This will be when the red flags got thrown because of Maverick Vinales' brake failure at 140 miles an hour in the first corner. Had that not happened, well, Juan and Moto, MotoGP Grand Prix winner for the very first time. It's up to half a second now, back to Alex Rins, but line for the number 36, which will just add to the stress of Davide Brivio, but he looks so, so good at the moment as he rounds turn. Ow. This lap of the race, what a performance this is by Juan Mir. Alex Rins at the moment has got nothing for him. Three tenths quicker than Rins on that last lap was missed by Juan Mir. This is what the Suzuki does so brilliantly. This is what the Suzuki does better than any other motorcycle on the path on lap 19 of this journey into the unknown for Juan Mir. Absolutely awesome. Simon, I've just got to come to you quickly. Absolutely awesome. You know I'm a fan for a long time. Stephen, um, I feel a lump in my throat watching him, you know, on his way. I, I'm so good at feeling the limit, you know. Um, you know, they're all on that, that edge, and he obviously feels like he can do it. So he's, away you go. Yeah, at the moment, Rins has got nothing for me at all. All he can do is watch his teammate stretch away into the distance. Don't hear us say very often about the factory Suzuki's. And as things stand, with seven laps to go, we might in final round decider in Portimao. If it goes the way as it's going right now, Juan Mir could be crowned MotoGP World Team Suzuki X start, but richly deserved their work in the winter. Sylvan Gintoli being one of them, the test rider as well, who will be loving what he's seeing at this moment in time. Yeah, project leader Shinichi Sahara, yeah. Uchi and. Davide Brevio are going to be launched into the skies by their team well, again. And just, just for all the Japanese engineers in Karusti that are certainly really had to make sacrifices for this factory effort this year. And it's all reaping big dividends right now. I'm getting a bit nervous. Further, further back, it didn't pay off the choice to go for the hard front for Jack Miller. He, he's not been able to the second place, but as they go oh, across I mean, the line, it's now eight tenths of a second. It's another 31.9 for Juan Mir. Just marvellous by Agro hanging on in there quite brilliantly he was slightly faster on that last circuit than Rins ahead of him and it's another defensive hit France haven't had a defender that good since Marcel Desailles have they <laughs> <laughs> Brad Binder's now gone past Franco Morbiken this has been for Yamaha Motor Company well let's hope it was a fuel pump for Rossi otherwise he might be staring down the barrel of a pit lane start as well really really stellar job credit to him this would have been a tricky weekend all the mixed conditions not having chance to dial in a dry <laughs> set of Petrucci it's another feather in the cap for the young Marquez and Brad Binder who's not that far behind Davizioso you, 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 the battle for the rip taking a penalty loop Brad Binder is in 10th yeah quality ride that Maverick Vinyar is on the last lap his best lap of the race a 30 to Anmir with five laps to go it's a 32 flat. The fastest man on the circuit right now is the man in fourth place there. Top of your pit. Binder has just set the fastest lap of the race on the factory KTM. I want 31, 884 as we look at a very pensive. Let's not forget, Mir winning this does make it our ninth different winner in 2020. Yep. <laughs> 12 races. Oh, good. So, and he's still got every chance of causing more damage to Andrea De Vizioso and then crucially, yeah, well, here you can see Dovi would tie 2016, wouldn't it? And that was the previous highest tally for different winners in a Premier Class World Championship. With two to go, we might for the way 2020 has gone so far. You can keep your eyes on the Suzuki boys up in the top left whilst we uh, have a little look at this battle. Are we going to get a little Rookie of the Year scrap with a couple of laps remaining? Yeah, that's what's keeping Brad Binder's attention right now, isn't it? In the hands of Andrea Di Vizioso, he breezes on by Alex Marquez. Oh! Marquez has gone down! He nearly took out Dovi as he well really, there. really, nearly did. There, Alex Marquez. That would have just about summed up Andrea Di Vizioso's look in 2020 as well, if he'd have been clattered into by Marquez. Oh, he went. Let's not forget, there's a couple of damp patches in here, and he was a bit out of shape on entry as well. There's a damp patch there, just to add to it. Right. That, that has done. It's moved uh, Binder up a place. Crucially, it gives a couple of the Yamaha boys an extra point, which... At the moment, anything they can take. Riding better than he's ever done in his Grand Prix career, and he's had some special moments. He's been untouchable, so 1.4. Pure class from Juan Mir here in Valencia. Hasn't really had any dry track time. How has he been able to deliver consistency like that? Well, he's really felt the pressure of leading this. He deserves every accolade he gets, Juan Mir. He's been brilliant this year from that first an absolute force yeah this will be seven podiums in nine races and in that condensed world championship campaign it was always Takanakagami has taken another few tents out of Polis Spargaro he's trying to cling on to hopes of a podium
be some day in the sun, wouldn't it? For Davide Brivio and his Suzuki team if things stay the way they are. 1 2 on circuit, 1 2 in the world. Done back in Hamamatsu. They return to the MotoGP World Championship in 2015 with Maverick Vinales and Alicia Spargro. 20. Two laps to go then now for Juan Mir. His advantage almost 1.5 seconds over his teammate Rins in has left for Juan Mir and he's not slowing down. It's a low 32 still for him. Soso's form, his speed has fallen off. Zarko's got problems, I think, Matt. Real problems. He's just dropped off the... Going to try and find a way through on Davizioso as well. This is a great ride from Brad Binder. That, uh, he's yeah, taking a, a penalty loop, ladies and gentlemen. Crucial points, Marquez and Brad Binder. They're desperate to win that prize. Mir's gone here. It's his to lose. Wait another round to try and find that crucial victory, but he'll be very encouraged by this performance. They won't have to tweak too much. If Mir does win here, he might not be so keen to risk everything next week. Brad Binder's gone ahead of Dovi now. Brink of history <laughs> here. He could become the ninth different win. Look at Frankie Carcieri, he doesn't know what to do. The crew chief for Juan, who no problems for Juan Mir. He's now coming through turn three, 11 corners away from the biggest moment of his Grand Prix career so far. Uh, they are being ridden to perfection around this Valencia circuit and their leading man in the World Championship is a pan. This is a special, special feeling. He's going to be able to put to bed all the talk about will it be the same winning the MotoGP World Championship without a race win? Because Suzuki are on course for a famous 1-2 here in Valencia. What a day it has been for the ball deal with. It's going to be a 1-2 for the first time since 1982 and there's just one corner left now. Miraculous! Awesome. From Juan Mir who wins here in Valencia and takes complete... Con it's since 1982, it's third for Polis Bargaro, fourth for Nakagami and fifth for Oliver. What a day! For the way big star now for the Suzuki team, 1-2 for them, Juan Mir. Well, the race win looked a mere formality. Is it a mere in second place? A damaging day for him and for Yamaha. He knows surely now the World Championship has gone. It's the Fabio Quattro. The gap coming into this 27 lap battle was a slender 14 points. What a massive swing in the position for Fabio Quattro.